Hi, hello, how are you doing? For today's video, we are going to be talking about overwriting. This is a topic that I know quite a bit about considering that I am a major overwriter. Always have been, always will be. I overwrite in each and every project that I have ever written ever since I started writing at like six, seven years old. And just recently in my last project, I had to do an extra draft just to get rid of overwriting. So I thought that this would be a good topic to talk about in today's video. We're going to be talking about what overwriting is, what causes overwriting, as well as the consequences of overwriting and multiple ways on how you can fix overwriting in your story. So what is overwriting? Overwriting, the word basically says it itself, is when the writer gives too much information when trying to convey something in their story. This can go for one sentence, one paragraph, a scene, or whole storylines within your book or story. Overwriting can look like giving too much information about a topic that, while it is relevant, we don't need that much information as a writer is giving, to giving facts that are completely irrelevant to the story or the point they're trying to make. Overwriting can have serious consequences for your story and none of them are good ones. Because our brain only wants to be fed the information that it truly needs, anything extra is seen as unnecessary and thus will be filtered out by the brain. This is something that the brain does also in everyday life because if it has to take up every single piece of information and try to store it, the brain is very simply going to get overwhelmed and it can take every single piece of information that it is being given. The same goes for when you are reading a book or a story. We want to know the information that we need in order to understand and enjoy the story, but no more than that. So when we are being fed too much unnecessary information, whether that be information that is completely irrelevant or just information that we've already been fed multiple times or we're just making too big of a deal out of something that really doesn't need as much attention, the brain is going to get bored and it will affect the reader's enjoyment of your story, especially if the overwriting happens on multiple occasions or becomes a pattern within your book. It will first cause your reader to become bored, then lose interest entirely, which can then cause them to lower the rating of your book or even DNF your book entirely, not finishing the story and just saying, you know what, I'm done. I'm moving on to something better. This, of course, is the last thing that you want to happen to your story. You want the reader to stay engaged. You want the reader to enjoy your story. But overwriting is often one of the biggest reasons that readers will put down your story. And not only because it causes boredom, but also because it can make your story incredibly confusing. Every single story is made up of a certain structure. This structure helps the reader as well as the writer understand what the story is about, what it needs to be about, the important parts of the story, all of the themes that you're presenting, as well as all the characters and the environment. When it is done right, the reader will be able to structure everything in easy boxes. Here's characters, here's plot, here's how they interact with each other, and the same goes for environment, themes, and so on. Overwriting can cause your reader to get confused. Which information belongs to which category? Where does each piece of information fit in the lore of your story? Why is this information important and relevant? Why do I need to care? How important is it that I remember this? And while it is okay to in times be a bit ambiguous and not tell everything, you can't confuse your reader by giving too much unnecessary information. And even from the perspective of you as a writer, as you are writing and editing your story, you're just gonna get confused speaking from experience. <laughs> if you as the writer are struggling to keep track of all the different characters, 
storylines, themes, settings, etc. You can't expect your reader to be able to keep track of everything flawlessly. Your reader should be able to pick out all of the main themes and important parts of the story that they need without having too much of an issue. Overwriting can cause too many gray areas that causes your reader to not be able to keep track of all of the important points and separate tiny fun details from truly important parts of the plot and story that they need to remember in order to enjoy the story. It also heightens your word count. Now when it comes to word count, I don't necessarily always go with what some people might say, saying that a certain genre should only have so many words in order to tell the story. Some stories just need a bigger word count to truly tell the story. And that's fine because underwriting can cause as much problems as overwriting. But overwriting cannot only heighten your word count a little bit, it can exaggerate it to a point where the story is just blown out of proportion. Just to give an example, the story that I just finished editing at one point, I believe it was either in draft two or three, this was a couple of years ago, sat at 175,000 words, which was way and way too high. The final word count now is sitting just at 120k, meaning that I had been overwriting by 55,000 words. That is 55,000 words of extra information that the reader would have needed to remember had I not chosen to cut it down. 55,000 words of unnecessary information. And I'm saying this because I really want to hammer home how much of a problem overwriting can be because a lot of people don't see it. A little extra fun, quirky fact from time to time is not a problem. But when you as a writer start looking more at what would be fun and quirky to put in the story rather than what is actually important to talk about, you end up in a danger zone you're gonna get issues with your story. <laughs> On top of that, it takes away from the point of your story. Every story has a main theme that it talks about. For example, the book that I just finished editing has a big focus on drug addiction. Of course, there are also smaller themes underneath there that are more covered in the subplots and within all of the characters, but the main overarching theme is drug addiction. This is what I want the focus to be on and what I want people to talk about if they were to recommend the book to someone else. I want them to say it's a, an interesting book that talks about drug addiction. I don't want people to have to be like, yeah, the book is about drug addiction and, 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 because again, that's just confusing and it takes away from what I really want readers to focus on. That main overarching theme. When you have too much information in there, too many themes, too many characters, too many storylines, your main point that you're trying to make is just going to get buried under a bunch of unnecessary information that your reader after they turn to the last page of your story is never going to remember. Instead of that main overarching theme leaving its mark on your reader, helping them remember what your story was about, maybe teaching them something Instead, there's going to be these little tiny breadcrumbs of information that is going to be gone in probably a couple of days. Because very simply, you've been feeding them too much. The brain does not have any more capacity to remember everything that you talked about. So it's just going to get confusing and eventually the brain just chucks everything because it's too 
confusing and you never really made a proper point anyway so we're just gonna get rid of all of it. This is why a lot of people say I finished the book a few days ago and I barely remember anything anymore. While your story may inherently be good, overwriting can genuinely ruin your story if you do not keep it in check. So what can you do to get rid of overwriting? The first thing is to not worry about it in your first draft. Your first draft is you telling a story to yourself. Whether you are an outliner or a complete pantser, you just get the idea and start writing down whatever comes to your mind. This is you figuring out what the story is, what you want it to be, where you want to expand, what you want to chuck. So it really doesn't matter if you overwrite a bunch of the story. You need to figure out first what it is that you want and need to tell the story before you start editing it to perfection. Well, perfection, there's really no such thing as perfection, but you get my point. Overwriting and underwriting in a first draft is completely normal. Later in editing, you can balance it all out. For now, it's fine to just go completely loose and just write what you want, write in all those funny little quirks and things that maybe are irrelevant to the reader, but if they help you understand the story, chuck it in there. However, you have to be willing to get rid of these things if they don't serve your story once you are in editing. The second thing that has really helped me is to have a very clear understanding of all the themes, topics, and storylines that I want in my book. Now, I am a... Some people have described me as a pantser, others have described me as a planter, meaning that I plan some things out a little bit and others I don't. It truly depends on the story. I don't have a book bible, which I, I've mentioned this before. I really don't like book bibles. I have suspected ADHD. I, my brain hates that stuff with a passion. I don't want to have to keep up with it. It's not happening <laughs> at all. Never. But what I do tend to do is while I write my first draft, I will keep a very simple bullet point list of all of the themes, characters, and plot lines that come up in my first draft. Just something to quickly glance at when I am starting to look into editing and seeing what I want to keep, what I don't want to keep what I want to cut down, what I want to enhance, just very simple, clear cut. If the theme is drug addiction, it's drug addiction, just drug addiction, family issues, uh, self-esteem, blah, 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 blah. And I don't go any further into it on that list than that, but it is enough to give me a quick glance when I start editing that I have something to refer to. It can also help you quickly see what needs to go without having to reread the entire draft, which is the next thing that you should do. When you first start editing, you're gonna wanna reread your draft. If you suspect that you have overwritten, there's a good chance that you're gonna pick up on at least the majority of places where you've massively have overwritten when you read your first draft. Not only will it give you a good overview of the entire story, but it will also give you an idea of exactly where you've overwritten. You might notice a theme as to where you've overwritten. Do you mainly overwrite in dialogue? Do you mainly overwrite in action scenes, inner monologue, scenes with high tension, or high emotional stakes. Let's say that the character is having a breakdown or just really emotional.
patterns to it. Again, write this down so that when you actually go in, start editing, start shopping, start to do a major overhaul of the story, you have a quick reference sheet as to what to look for. And just reading that at the beginning of each of your writing sessions is going to give you a quick refresher on what to look out for as you go through your story. It may also help to write down which kind of overwriting that you do. Is the information completely irrelevant? It has it turned into purple prose? Is the information relevant but are you making the same point three times over in the same paragraph? Those are all different instances of overwriting and knowing which one it is that you tend to do the most will help you keep an eye out for those exact instances in the future. It will help you to see your own strengths and weaknesses as a writer and that in turn will help you grow and learn not to make those same mistakes in the next story or the next draft. And then of course, it's time to go in and start editing. I recommend always reading each scene before you go in and edit, like again, once you've decided like, okay, now I'm gonna go in and actually make the changes rather than just reading the story. I like to work in Scrivener, so I just highlight or make a comment whenever I see that I have overwritten something. If I'm not sure whether I want to completely cut it or whether I want to touch it at all, I'll usually usually leave it for the next draft. But if I know this is an instance where I've overwritten and I need to do something about it, there are a couple of questions that I will ask myself to see how I'm going to fix this overwritten part. What are the consequences if I cut this? Are they positive or negative? And in which way are they positive and negative? Will there be a plot hole in the story if I decide to completely cut this? And if there is, how will I fix it without overwriting again. Will the scene be too hard to follow if I cut this entirely? Will me cutting this affect the reader's enjoyment of the story? And again, is that positive or negative? And if I have decided I want to cut this down but not cut it entirely, which piece of that information is the most important and where does it go into overwriting? What is my core point that I'm trying to make? Do not cut anything that you feel is genuinely important just because someone else may have said, I don't know if this is important. If you as the writer, as the author of this story, feel that this is vital and necessary information, keep it. Also, do not start cutting anything purely to get a lower word count. Many writers are intimidated by the idea of having a word count that falls out of the recommended range. If your story is within the recommended range, but your story has suffered for it, you're still not going to get anything out of it. If your story is slightly above the recommended range, but has all of the information that it needs, is easy to follow, has clear character development, no plot holes, and a satisfying storyline and conclusion, you will benefit from it, and so will your readers. So don't do anything just to get a little closer to what the internet tends to consider a good word count. The internet especially has made people very paranoid about if my word count is too high, my story will not be able to get published, I won't even be able to get an agent, no one will enjoy the story. Just look up how many debut authors have written books that are above the recommended word count that have been huge successes. You will find a million of them. I once found a list of 50 debut novels that were all above their recommended 
word count that were over 500 pages that were all massive successes. I'm looking those up on Goodreads. They all had great reviews and those authors, and I'm not just talking about George R. R. Martin with Game of Thrones, have really good careers as an author. They have a genuine fan base. They have a genuine, good, long-lasting job out of writing stories and their word count was above the recommended uh, value that you would today see online. If your story is good, the word count does not matter as much. It can be a guideline to make sure that your story one, it can be told in 110,000 words, doesn't end up being 460,000. It is not the thing that's gonna kill your story or kill your career as an author, whether that be self-published or traditionally. So while it's important to look for instances of overwriting, don't start cutting anything just for word count or because the internet told you this is an example of bad writing. Writing is subjective, there are a few guidelines, but there's no perfect way to do it. And I know that when I started to look for instances of overwriting, I started to look for perfect ways to get rid of overwriting and my story did start to suffer because of it. Do what you believe in your gut is right and leave the internet out of it. So I hope that this video was helpful and that it will help you get rid of those nasty instances of overwriting. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos. The last few months have been quite hectic, so I haven't been able to film. The weekly videos will be back from this point on. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments down below, and I will see you next week with a new video. Bye-bye.